You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 12th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live at the Both Sides Don't Studios in beautiful downtown Springfield, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Class. Hey, I, I feel sometimes we should just change the name of this show to Both Sides Don't. Because <laughs> it, it is, you know, I, and it it does my heart a world of good to see how many people have taken up that very simple battle cry right. over the years. But it really right. is just, um, as I, I reposted something from 10 years ago or nine years ago, it is strontium 90 in the milk. It's yep. everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's so creepily predictable that we don't even have to do it anymore no you just know that when some shit hits the fan whoever is talking if they're on the right or if they're trying to suck up to david brooks they're gonna say you know this isn't about left and right yeah it is it really fucking is <laughs> it really is and it totally you'll hear, is. <laughs> you hear some variation of it's both sides it's everyone it's society's to blame everyone's to blame um it's such a common refrain now that uh breaking it will be spectacular but yeah. it's it that's the work of a generation that really is but there do seem to be two modes of kind of the never trumper mode of both sides though yes. there's one mode that says uh you're gonna need us uh reasonable republicans in 2020 so you better just you know line up and do what we say all 40 of them yeah yeah and that's what you know, Mona, Mona Charon said yeah. this week, right? And we're, we're going to get into that because you wrote a whole post about I did. I did. her article, mm -hmm. uh, her op-ed, where she said, you're going to need us. And then the other way that the Republican mm -hmm. rebranding project is uh, being seeded right now mm -hmm. is to just completely ignore politics and pretend that this is about uh, problem solvers. and Right. Uh, you know, democracy, really, we really love democracy so much that right. all the divisiveness is really bothering people. And so really, we're just going to forget about politics all together and make oh. it about, about, you know, puppies. Right. <laughs> and that's the, right. just this bland denial of there being any kind of a problem in the house mm -hmm. at all. You've always, you've always said, clap your hands and say, let's make pancakes and just ignore right. that mom's nose is bleeding. Right. Right. This is the virtue of coming from a, a family with alcohol problems. Yeah, this, I we, we've all had a the lot symptoms. of conversations this yeah. week about alcohol right. and uh, how it affects families. And I'm not going to get into all of that, but uh, we ha we've had to talk with our children about, you know, we they have friends who have to come over here from time right. to time, right? And stay with us, and yeah. that's fine. We're glad to have that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but having to talk with them about how you and I both grew up in houses that were not one hundred percent peaceful, right. shall we say? Yes, that's true. And uh, that uh, we understand that there's times when the there needs to be a a safety valve, a place of safety to come and mm -hmm. and be there. So. Uh, the place of safety, though, isn't there's no problem at all. Right. Well, and that's that's the that's the balancing act or that's yeah. the the mental gymnastics that yeah. children or families with with addiction problems, especially right. when the addiction problems are in the parents. Yeah. Have to come to. Yeah. Because yep. if to navigate that world and, and emerge like at, healthy at all or to come mm -hmm. to some level of health years after you have to both. um Factor in the fact that you are in a dysfunctional environment that you cannot control. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that the people who are in charge are violent or mm -hmm. insane or unpredictable yep. and, and cannot be relied on at right. all. Right. And that, but they're in charge. Right. You have no say over anything because these fuckers are in charge. Yeah. And you have to be plotting your escape. <laughs> you yeah. have to be figuring out how the hell do I do, since there's no way to fix this environment because the problem is this person. Mm -hmm. This person is the problem. 
Everything else is negotiable. Everything else is is contingent. But the real problem is this person right here who is an addict and who's wrecking everything around him or her. Right. right. And when you cannot control your environment, your your best bet is to flee the environment. And that's where we're at now. As as a as a party and the same people in this country, we're all in a cage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all we've all been put in a cage with crazy people as guards. And a sadistic, lying, grifting, lunatic, racist as the commandant. Dear class, I want to I want to pull back a little bit on your analogy sure. of being the, in the cage because yeah, we Democrats listening to podcasts are not in a cage like no. the migrants are. So no, I, no, no one no. is making that comparison. We are in an enforced relationship yep. that we don't control. We have a and we can't... minority government. Is what right. that's what is happening. We have a a crazy minority uh, running this country and Mm -hmm. the same people are not. And yet there is this uh, group of people who built this, who catered to to the crazy, who designed Mm -hmm. ads to bring out the crazy and built a party around it that they thought they could control. Right. And we'll just have tax cuts for billionaires and deregulation for polluters and throw a little racism in the advertising to get people to vote for us and misogyny mm-hmm. to get people to vote for us. And uh, we'll never, ha- we'll never have any accountability to the the plebes out there. And that didn't work. Did it? No, no. Uh, and, and you know, who's blamed for that? Democrats. No, <laughs> <laughs> Democrats. that's the point. That's the point. Now yeah. that it's all, you know, now that the dumpster is on fire, well, we're going to come over to your house now and tell you how to rearrange things so that we right. can be happy. No, this and and we talked about this a lot last week. We just mm-hmm. want to point out that Mona Charon was the designated hitter for Never Trumpers right. this week. And, and she's like just a- every single week we're going to have somebody say something along the lines of you Democrats need to behave. Right. And not go not go crazy on us because We'll have four more years of Trump if you do that. You need our votes too. Well, right. you've got a choice. You can vote for us or you can vote for Donald Trump. Right. Um, and, but I, and, I also am very terrified right now that Donald Trump is going to get reelected. I am too. I'm, I we have every reason to be really fearful that that will happen and mm-hmm. that Donald Trump not facing the prospect of reelection anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, just mm-hmm. unfettered is going to be, you know, orders of magnitude worse than Donald Trump mm-hmm. is now because there's yeah. no reason for him to hold back anything. There's no reason right. for him to just not literally start prying the the uh, paintings off the wall of the White House and selling them on Etsy because who's going to stop him? His yeah. own party's not going to stop him. He appointed the judges and the judges all look the other way. Bill Barr is just busy sucking his dick. He's not going to do yeah. anything about anything. And all it is all too easy. And this is why you and I are, are sort of obsessive about when we encounter people calling them the Trumpers or the 32% or the something. No, they're the Republicans. They're Republicans. This is the Republican Party. Yeah. Quit pretending there's something else other than that. Quit pretending there's some other Repo- Republican Party out there that's going to save you or that's, that's waiting in the wings to sweep into power. This is it. This is the party you built. And uh, to as long as we're talking about Mona Chair, and you mind if we just jump into it? Let's jump right into it. And then I want right. to talk about good news after that. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, no, Mona Charon is a lifelong, hard right, conservative, uh, just hates liberals. I mean, that, that's her sort of claim to fame. She just thinks liberals are idiots. She and, is, and she's written books along the lines yes. of trying to, to kind of weasel in on Ann Coulter's right. She's audience, the, right? She's the Ann Coulter with a PhD. Right. Uh, she, the two books that, of the three that, of hers that I know of are Do-Gooders, How Liberals Hurt Those They Claim to Help and the Rest of Us, and Useful Idiots. How liberals got it wrong in the Cold War and still blame America first. That's who she is. And this week, she wrote an article that she got published in Politico because when you have friends in high places, you get to write things for for publications like this. How a Democrat can win over a never-Trumper, because that's our responsibility now. And if you don't think you need us, you should think twice. And it's just, it's one long study in both siderism. Wouldn't it be a shame if, if if we... all turn to Caesarism, the left and the right, you know, are run the risk of turning it to dictators and to Caesarism. And isn't it a shame how both sides do everything? And uh, the Green New Deal is this totalitarian thing. She says, Stalin promised every kid a happy childhood. The Green New Deal is close. 
She oh, re- she just reeks with contempt for everything you and I stand for. But that contempt manifested itself and metastasized and became the Republican Party and Donald Trump. And the one thing she hates more incrementally than liberals like you and me is Donald Trump because he's so rude because he says that he not not that his policies are bad. She loves the fact that he's deregulating the shit out of everything and cutting taxes and making the wealthy wealthier and promising to kick people off of social programs. She loves that shit. She is a hardcore right wing fucking nut job. But she hates the fact that he's rude and he says the, the quiet parts loud. And so she's she's saying, well, basically, if you court me properly and if you bring the proper, you know, if you bring the proper gifts to my door and if you lay down flower petals, I might fucking consider consenting to maybe leaning in your direction and maybe voting for someone as long as it's Joe Biden. Right. As long as it's fucking Joe Biden. And what because what she proposed that we do is um if we embrace normalcy again, we Democrats, by the way. And that for her means and I'm not kidding, Warren G. Harding. Yep. She may she she name checked Warren G. Harding. And she she said what the worst possible outcome could be for this it's not babies in cages and it's not wrecking our alliances it's not pedophiles it's not ripping health care away from tens of millions of people the worst case scenario if donald trump is reelected, is and i quote conservatism may well be irredeemably tarnished no honey conservative <laughs> conservatism died 40 years ago yeah. you've been a parasite living off its corpse and hating liberals for a fucking living well this is the world you made and now you get to fucking live in it. And if you'd like us to let you on the lifeboat, you will shut the fuck up and you will get on board and you will paddle. And maybe in 10 or 15 years, we'll let you call out some numbers and let you move up to the upper decks. But you don't get to claim policy. You did this. This is entirely on you. And if you don't want us to leave you drowning out there among the meatheads that you created, then you goddamn well better shape up. Or out you go. Now, that's my take. Of course, that's why never Trumpers don't like me because I say things like that. <laughs> they block you on Twitter. Now, the flip that. side is I'm perfectly happy. I'm perfectly content. I'm thrilled to welcome anyone into our very big tent who actually confesses and atones and promises to work to fix what they broke. I'm not interested in anyone showing up at the door blaming me for their problems, blaming me for their fucked up party. People who've made a fortune basically demonizing people like me their entire life. And now they've made a shit, now they've shit their own bed. They want to come in and take mine. No, 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 no. And I have <laughs> no interest in dealing with these people other than with contempt because there's just not that many of them. Yeah. Yeah. There are right. four of these people. And honestly, if you're a liberal, and you get to talk to these people on a platform as happened with one of the pod save things today mm-hmm. uh anna marie cox interviewed her good friend rick wilson again and, and oh, every month every <laughs> month he's a free platform on her liberal podcast every month and what she does is she talks to him about foreign policy which is interesting and talks to him about economics and and how you know those people are are terrible and donald trump's awful and he has lots of invective for donald trump but she makes a, a, an explicit promise not to bring up any of the unpleasantness mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like how much shit he's taking on social media for telling liberals how to run their fucking elections. Let's be clear. Rick Wilson's electoral experience consists of whipping bigots and imbeciles into an electoral frenzy and then pointing them at a polling place every two years to get assholes elected for money. He and that's he admits it. At. He admits that. Well, that, except yeah. that's not a conversation he ever wants to have past that. He, I I used to practice the dark arts. No, you built this party. There's nothing transferable about that skill to the Democrats. We don't want to take. We don't want to hoard a bunch of lunatics and right wing assholes and bigots. We don't. There's nothing. There's nothing you can teach us about that because all the assholes, all the bigots, are in your party. You brought them there. You trained them. There's nothing you have to teach us. We, we know how to win elections. But the idea that you will simultaneously crow about the fact that I've got 30 years of getting people elected. Maybe you should shut up and listen to me. At the same time, take no responsibility for the fact that you won elections by turning your party into a dung heap of lunatics and assholes. The fact that you won't combine those two elements and have an adult conversation with anyone who knows who's got your fucking number 
that you'll only seek out people who promise not to ask you any hard questions because we don't want to offend Rick and the other 12 never Trumpers out there, all of whom have media gigs. Well, that's the, that's the end of my rope right there. Mm -hmm. If you are a liberal and you have a chance to confront a never Trumper in their stinking hypocrisy, do it. Now, granted, that'll be the last time you'll be allowed to do that, but still give it a try. So uh, I'd like to talk about how uh, the House Judiciary Committee subpoenaed the Dirty Dozen this week. Yeah. And sure of course, they're not going to show up. But that's not the point. The point is to call it out and call it obstruction and call it a cover up in plain sight. Mm -hmm. This I realize this is going tremendously slow for a lot of people, including me. It's hard every day to wake up to the to the job that I have writing mm -hmm. about Donald Trump every day. And uh, I've gotten emails and tweets and seen people that I love and respect say, you know, the Democrats in the House, we we worked so hard to elect them and they've mm -hmm. done nothing. Mm -hmm. Number one, that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and But number two, there's so much that, I, I don't know how to put this, it's sort of like A-B testing. Uh -huh. What if the Republicans had kept the House. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Jim Jordan was chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Mm -hmm. Well, we had that, well, for, we had that yeah, for two for years. Two years, exactly. And nothing got Trump. done. And nothing got done. And today, cuts. today, we, uh, the House voted uh, with a bipartisan bill. It had bipartisan support to put a leash on Donald Trump and his Iran war yen. And it looks like they're going to force Mitch McConnell. To, they're going to force it down his throat. They're going to force him uh, to pa to vote on the House bill in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we won on the census question. Yes, that's very true. That was done with ACLU and a whole bunch of other people suing, mm -hmm. taking him to court. Uh, as soon as he found out he couldn't switch the lawyers... Uh, he decided to just have a Rose Garden celebration with the attorney, as you said, the attorney general just getting down on his knees and saying, mm -hmm. congratulations, Mr. President. I really, I don't know how you feel about this, but I really think Donald Trump would just love to have a television show where he's the president and no policies ever get changed in any way. Because well, it doesn't that. matter. But that's he what he's got. That. That's what he's got. <laughs> That's what he's got. And and the reason that Alexander uh, Acosta lost his job is he has bad rating. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, what that's passes it. for leadership. What passes is, for leadership is, do you appear tough and uh, supportive of the president on TV? And if you do, then that's why Kellyanne Conway still has a job. Right. That's exactly right. Uh, and there's a magic and there's a magic um, um, membrane mm -hmm. through which Republicans pass. It's called leaving office. <laughs> and, and Republicans who You mean like who Paul were, Ryan? By Paul Ryan. Um, and there's a long, long list of quotes that uh, pretty much any liberal can whip out uh, covering uh, uh, Ted Cruz and Paul Ryan and right down the list of, of all the people when they thought Donald Trump was going to lose. Mm -hmm. When they thought there was a chance he was going to lose. They were just, he's a nut job. He's a racist. He's a reactionary. He cannot be allowed, et cetera. Et cetera. Every one of those people has rolled over for this guy mm -hmm. because Republicans are traitors. They're cowards. They're weaklings. They're scum. They have no principles. They have no soul. And that goes for the never Trumpers who who waited until two seconds before the, the, the truck hit the wall to jump off and come over to my side of the aisle and, and tell me how to run things. But that's who they are. That They spent a, a long time creating a magnetic field to draw in the base they have. And the base they have produced the politicians they have. And we've and the one of the only virtues of having written a blog now for 14 years, in your case, 15 years, I think, is you can go back and say, no, I really was talking about this shit during the Bush administration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's some shit I wrote during the Bush administration that is exactly what we're going through now. In fact, pretty much everything I wrote during the Bush administration is exactly applicable now with underscores and boldface. So don't tell me you couldn't see it coming because we did see it coming and you told us we were reactionary idiots and to sit down and shut up. But all those people rolled over. They all capitulated. They all looked for an exit and couldn't find one and decided, well, I'll just hang out in Donald Trump's 
pants. I'll just hang out in his jock strap until, you know, something better comes along. But the reason they capitulated is because they know their own voters. Yeah. They yep. know the people. They know these people, these knuckle dragging reprogrammable meatheads that they created, that they invited into their party. They know who these people are and they know they're terrified of them. But there is a membrane. You leave office. <laughs> you wait a few months. You write a book and suddenly you're full of courage. Yeah. Now that you have absolutely no authority to do anything except make money writing a book. You're full of piss and vinegar about what a righteous man you are, what a disaster Donald Trump has been. And if anyone bought, bought, buys Paul Ryan's book, I want to know their name and address. Because mm -hmm. I want to visit, because unless you're hate reading it, Unless you're showing your kids, this is what a coward looks like. <laughs> Look at the kids. You see this guy coming, you run the other way because this is a monster. This is a soulless scumbag. Unless you're buying it for that reason, uh, I have no idea why anyone would buy a book by Paul Ryan other than this is another way of funders to put a lot of money in his pocket by buying up a bunch of copies and making him wealthy by, yep. beyond yep. what he is now. But – the idea that Paul Ryan thinks there's a market for a book about his heroic internal spiritual journey uh, just cracks. Maybe he should go on tour with David Brooks. They could talk about their spiritual journeys together. I wouldn't go. be surprised if that happened, though. That wouldn't, yeah, well, that wouldn't surprise me a bit. Well, Paul Ryan's going to dump his wife and then get a new one. So <laughs> he's a little behind the curve there, but I'm sure he's got it in him. I'm sure he can do it. Oh, man. But let's get back to um, the frustration level. Yes. And how you handle it. Yes. How I handle it. Because there is a frustration level and it could just make you sick. I, I had an email from somebody who just is physically mm -hmm. ill, literally, not mm -hmm. not just making this up. Oh, I'm so sick of this. Right. But literally having health problems because of Donald Trump's being on the news every day. Waking up to this every day. Mm -hmm. Waking up to this every day is incredibly stressful. And you just want it over. And and the temptation to blame Nancy Pelosi for not doing anything, for not starting an impeachment hearing. Right. Uh, it just reminds me that congressional leadership only does something when they're forced to do it. Yes, that's true. And so I want to get back to how do you force Nancy Pelosi to do something? How do you force Congress to start an impeachment hearing? Mm-hmm. Start an impeachment inquiry. And I think you have to start locally. Look at your member of Congress. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking to myself as well. My member of Congress. And this is where we get into local news as well. Um, my member of Congress is Rodney Davis. He's a Republican. I have to get rid of him right. in addition to getting rid of Donald Trump. That's my job. And I have much more power to get rid of him mm -hmm. in terms of the weight of my effort. What I do, because because we're still in an electoral college situation, Illinois, I have a feeling is going to go for the Democrat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I could be wrong, but <laughs> I believe at this point that Illinois is going to go for the Democratic candidate. Yeah. Uh, so, but I ha I also believe that Rodney Davis has a good shot of getting reelected again. Yes, he does. Uh, it's razor thin, and the more we work to get our voters out, the better chance. Uh a Democratic candidate has to win. Yes, so indeed. I'm going to make that effort. That's where I can make a difference in terms of changing the trajectory of the House of Representatives towards what I want. Yes. And so I'm going to work for Betsy Dirksen Londrigan. I'm going to write postcards for her, et cetera. I'm also doing postcards to voters. Right now they're doing a postcard, postcard campaign to encourage voters in Florida to vote by mail and to get their registrations changed over to vote by mail. That means paper ballots in Florida. That is going to make a huge difference. <laughs> sure will. So I highly recommend that you find whatever it is. Now, if you are if you have a Democratic candidate or a Democratic congressman mm -hmm. and that congressperson is one of the 79 to 82 that have already called for an impeachment inquiry, Yeah. Great. You've got to do something else. And maybe it's postcards to voters in Florida. Maybe it's. Well, thank uh, them. Right. No, thank and, you. And no. thank them. Yeah. And thank them. Don't forget to thank them. That's a good, good point. Good point. Um, but I think we have to find something to do because going on social media or going to email or, and I'm not saying don't email me. I love hearing from everybody. Don't, don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the collective whining of, oh, my God, you know, why can't why can't someone higher than me do something about this? Right. 
leaves you powerless right. and and makes it worse. The, the two things that we can do are take a break when you need to, but also find something to do mm -hmm. that you can do. There, this is, um, we are recording this on the 12th. There are protests tonight in cities all over the country. Yes, there are. Lights for Liberty. Uh, I expect those to be very well attended. Uh, Tammy sent the information on that last week, and I was able to write a post about it at Crooks and Liars and get the word out that way. I noticed that Rachel Maddow had a segment on it last night as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I sent a text to Junior Dude, who is in one of the cities that's doing a protest. Springfield isn't. And I think it's because um, they're actually doing the ones in Illinois at um, ICE detention centers that oh, are in Illinois. That makes sense. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they were focusing their fire on that and that may, I would rather have more people there, you know, at those detention centers. Yeah. Of course. Uh, so at any rate, find something to do. And and I realize that there's a marching fatigue <laughs> going yeah. on, uh, but find something that you can do, whether it's postcards to voters or find that congressional candidate who's challenging whoever. I noticed that Mitch McConnell's opponent Yes. Uh, raised $2.8 million in a day. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Keep it coming. And Keep it coming. Yeah. People are sending five bucks when they can to mm -hmm. more than one Democratic candidate. That is very encouraging. Uh, and I I wanted to also point out, uh, did you notice Rachel Maddow last night when she had on Kamala Harris mm -hmm. was saying, you know, she seems to be everybody's second choice. Yeah. I thought about Lincoln. That's you, right. you told the story of yeah, Lincoln. That's... Abraham Lincoln got the nomination in the, at the Republican convention at, in those smoke-filled rooms. By, by telling being everyone, second look, choice. <laughs> no, not your first choice. These are all good, noble men. But as a second choice, please consider me. Mm -hmm. And he turned out to be everyone's first choice, second choice. Mm -hmm. And that's how he won. Um, yeah. I And I know, sir, I, I profoundly disagree with Nancy uh, Pelosi's strategy right now. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is yeah. well past. I just, I do understand it. I, right. I, 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 I'm frustrated by it, but I, I do it. understand, I understand it. it. Yes. I, we're watching an active crime scene with, right. with crimes, constitutionally removable crimes happening every day in front of us. Right. And watching her look at the clock going, not yet, not yet, not yet. Like, no, no, no. When? Because, because she has no faith in the media or right. the voters. Oh, I think none. She and, thinks everyone's a fruit fly and, and I, no one will remember yesterday. G20 was a week ago, Drip Glass. I've never heard of that. The, the president of the United States had to have his daughter uh -huh. alongside of him to keep him from being an internet. I mean, he was already in an international embarrassment, right. but to keep him from shitting the floor, basically. I, I agree with her assessment of the average citizen. Mm -hmm. I agree with her assessment of the media. I couldn't agree more. It is yep. nonetheless, you know, it is not the job. In the job of the sheriff is to get out there and and do what he can. When when uh, when Gary Cooper in High Noon is out there all by himself, that's because that's his goddamn job. Mm -hmm. If he didn't, you know, if he didn't want the job, didn't you shouldn't have taken the job. But this is your job. You're the third in line constitutional officer behind a White House that is openly contemptuous and breaking the Constitution and committing impeachable offenses constantly, publicly, and smirkingly. And if the best you can muster is we're going to look into it eventually, or that's really not our job, that's someone else's job. You are losing your most loyal base. You're losing people who really, really want to support you, and 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 nobody knows what the fucking plan is, other than wait mm -hmm. and wait and wait until conditions improve. And they might improve and they might not. I am entirely sympathetic with that point of view. I truly am. On the other hand, I have worked in an environment at the city of Chicago where the person two, two steps above me was a monster. Mm -hmm. And there's a line uh, from uh, a book called Inferno by Jerry Pornell. It's a science fiction book where science fiction writer goes to hell. And he is guided through hell very much like Dante in the, in the original Inferno, except he's d guided through hell by Mussolini. And, uh, and all the way through, He's looking at this terrible injustice and things are wildly out of whack and people are in lakes of fire who committed relatively trivial offense. And he's bitching and bitching and bitching to his guide. Why don't you do something about this? Why don't you, why aren't you working? Why aren't you fixing this? And eventually his guide turns to him and says, I too am in hell. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. This is hell. <laughs> there is nobody here in charge except the bad guys. I had to tell people who worked for me 
in this horrible environment being run by an awful, awful, sadistic asshole that I'm in hell with you. I can't yeah. promote you. I can't change the situation. I cannot fix what's broken with this organization. The only person who can is the mayor and he's not going to. So we can either do the work we can do or we can all leave, but I can't fix it. Even though I'm your boss, even though I apparently have some authority, I cannot fix what's broken about this organization, which is a terrible thing to tell people, but it's true. Mm -hmm. That's an adult conversation. I think we would benefit from an adult conversation with the Speaker of the House. I think we would benefit if she, I, don't tell me what your secret, secret plans are. Don't, you know, as Hal Sparks says, don't play with your cards face up. Mm -hmm. But you have to give me some clue as to what's going on. Because here's here's my flashback. The whole Obama 12-dimensional chess thing, we're going to compromise, we're going to figure this shit out, that was a complete failure. Complete failure. He got uh, Affordable Care Act passed, for which I am truly grateful. But this whole idea that we're going to compromise and promote and we're going to cajole and we're going to this and we're going to give them half of what they want and then we're going to give another half and another half and we're going to compromise, eventually the fever will break. That was the plan. Oh, I see. Yeah. You, you're sacrificing my liberal policies and my liberal values to a monstrously evil party on the assumption that they're going to get better. And that eventually they'll round the corner and they'll start working with you because we really do have big, scary problems that we all have to deal with. And, and all of us on the left are saying, it's not going to work, man. You don't understand these people. How the fuck do you not understand them? They're, you're the political genius. We're just morons out here in the cornfield why are you not seeing that this strategy is doomed to fucking fail because the people you're dealing with are awful and they want to hurt you and the more you are vulnerable to them the more they will stick the fucking knife in so i'm worried that she's operating on some beltway delusion of what the republican party will or won't do if certain levers are pushed and pulled very much like david brooks fell apart after donald trump was elected <laughs> You know, he's he's out there telling people, don't worry, it's going to be Marco it's Rubio. Be Rubio. Don't worry, yeah. the establishment's coming to the rescue. Well, every time a, an authority figure has reassured us that they got this, they got this, they have failed in the last 10 years, every time. And maybe it's time for those authority figures to take us a little bit more into their confidence and tell us, look, we're not going to sneak off and give the Death Star plans to Mitch McConnell, but you got to give us something more than, wait. <laughs> wait the time is not yet right wait because you're the person who told george bush that he could yeah. get off scot-free so your credibility is a little bit much yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all your impeachment mulligans are kind of used up so i get the fact you're a genius i get the fact you're marshalling resources you're trying to keep a whole bunch of disparate people together and moving forward and we made it through 30 years of sliding down this razor blade into a puddle of mercury uh, without losing hope. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now, Drift Class, to push Donald Trump out of office? Work local. Mm -hmm. Work local. First of all, my my belief is that we, especially like our podcast and the work we do when we write, is to give people like us a way to understand the conditions that we're in. Mm -hmm. So, number one, the press is not your friend. <laughs> number two, the Never Trumpers are not your friend. And number three, you got to work just like you said, work mm -hmm. locally. So. Um, for example, our our congressman, Rodney Davis. Yes, this is this is we're going to go local now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go real local. Actually, a couple local things. Yeah. I, I want to give some people some good news. Yeah, uh, because elections do matter. Our governor, J.B. Pritzker, disinvited the banned Confederate Railroad from the Illinois State Fair. Do you know why, Blue Gal? They fly the Confederate flag at their at their concerts. Yes, and he said, and I quote, the Fed Confederate flag is a symbol of murder, rape, and treason, which it sure as hell is. Instead of the Confederate Railroad Band, uh, J.B. Prisker got Snoop Dogg to come yeah. to the state fair. <laughs> and the, the young people, the people under 20 in this house are way more yeah. excited about Snoop Dogg Snoop. coming to the fair. Coming <laughs> They're, we got to buy tickets. We got to do this now. Come on. So, uh, yeah. He he has some pull in uh, millionaires and billionaires mm -hmm. circles to get uh, a headliner that people might actually care about. Yeah, the kids want to go see for sure. But yeah, a couple of states away, the Tennessee governor. Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. Yeah, tomorrow is Nathan Bedford Forrest Day <laughs> in Tennessee. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about American history, 
Uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest was a Confederate general and a very skilled and good one. He was also the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan and a ruthless, murderous, traitor, and domestic terrorist. That's all he is. And he's being celebrated in Tennessee by the governor because the governor is a Republican. And that's how Republicans roll. So in Illinois... And it's, he's terrified of his voters. Right, he's terrified that they're going to turn on him like the Klan and come for him in the night. So he has to give them something. And he's giving them a, an honor of uh, honoring Nathan Bedford Forrest, who's a traitor, who's, who's a top-tier domestic terrorist and should be... Um, sh- children should learn of him like that. So over in Illinois... Confederate Railroad can't play at the state fair because the Confederate flag is a traitor's flag over in Tennessee. Yay, it's Nathan Bedford Forest Day. And that's why elections matter. And that's elections why working matter. local. Re- so I, I did want to mention uh, Rodney Davis, our Congressman Rodney Davis. Uh, this is the person that we're going to be knocking doors and mailing postcards and phone banking, giving what little money we can to the candidate to knock him off. Um, yep. He has, like many Republicans, like all Republicans, really, he has his own unique theory for why things are the way they are. <laughs> uh, that, that, that it has no, that it's always self-absolving. It's always we did nothing wrong. It's always it's someone else's fault, and that fault is usually Nancy Pelosi. So mm-hmm. when asked, uh, he was on WCIA, which is a television station in Champaign, Illinois, and he was asked uh, why there are so few Republican women in Congress. And there are too few members of our Republican conference that are women or African-American or a minority. Davis told a group of women uh, on Monday of this week, I get asked a lot, what do you th- think as a Republican with the fact that you have many fewer women in your conference today than you ever have? He continued, and I'm not making this up, I would like to remind people that it's Nancy Pelosi, who in many cases spent millions of dollars to elect a male Democrat over a female republic in swing districts. So it's Nancy Pelosi's fault that there aren't that many women and that damn few minorities in the Republican Party. Because Nancy Pelosi looked at party over gender. Shocking. To elect Democrats. Shocking. She had no she had no motivation to elect Democrats. Yeah. She should have just elected women. Right, just women. Just the vaginas. <laughs> just line up with the vaginas. <laughs> We're going to count and off. If they're Republicans and and anti choice right. and anti health care yeah. yeah. and yeah, yeah. But that's the kind oh of that's God. that's his explanation for why the party of white, straight, Christian conservative thugs and assholes mm-hmm. and racists don't have a whole lot of women and minorities in it because of Nancy Pelosi. Because it's always Nancy Pelosi. Because it's always the Democrats' fault. I have emails going back twenty years. And there's no difference in the in the blaming when things go wrong. It it's always Hillary Clinton. It's always Nancy Pelosi. It's always Michelle Obama, uh, uh, Muchel Obama. It's always the mm-hmm. Kenyan usurper. There's no Republican you can find who will take fucking responsibility for the Republican Party. That's their strength. They just won't do it. And. They really, and there's a whole lot of, of someone has to take responsibility for it because it's really big. It's a big problem. The Republican Party really is the single greatest existential threat facing this country, period. And someone has to take responsibility for it. And since we blame liberals for every other fucking thing under the sun, let's blame them for how shitty the Republican Party turned out. And you, and on social media, Tom, Nuck, Tom Nichols does this all the time. Tom, oh my God. Tom yes. Nichols, who's on Morning Joe this morning. Who was explaining that basically, well, you know, the problem is that you run these lefty, lefty, lefty candidates and you basically drive people into the Republican Party's arms. And, well, OK, let's look at the last lefty, crazy, lefty lunatic that drove Republicans crazy was a guy named Barack Obama. And here's how twice. <laughs> and here's how Republicans <laughs> reacted to him. And I, there's like a 20 minute video of the Kenyan usurper and Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity and everyone in the Republican Party and uh, Rupert Murdoch all just losing their shit. Uh, birtherism. Uh, hey, he's a commander in chief. He's the latte saluter. He's not up to the job. He's not really an American. He hates people. He hates white people. That was the immediate reaction to the election of Barack yeah, Obama. Yeah, in the first two months of his yep. of his campaign yep. of his presidency, because they yeah. were trained that way. Because they've been trained like seals. And the idea that you're going to pretend that that never happened again. This is the, mm-hmm. this is why Nancy mm-hmm. Pelosi might very well be right. You can barely find a Republican who acknowledges the Republican Party existed prior to 2015. 
Right. And if right. it did, right. it was it was Reagan. And then a bunch of stuff happened. No one really knows what. And then <laughs> Trump came along and ruined everything. And if it, oh, right. I, th- I think Nancy Pelosi's, uh, as you said, her assessment is spot on of the Republican Party and voters and the media is spot on. Is is right. Yeah. So I wish I had a little bit of a crystal ball to see where <laughs> things are going, just to make today easier. Yeah, I do. Too. But I don't have that. Right. So and I can't tell Nancy Pelosi what to do. No. But I can. I can hire somebody to be my congresswoman exactly. who okay. can help to tell Nancy Pelosi what to do. Exactly. And and do um, and, and keep the Affordable Care Act from being destroyed. Right. You know, there's a lot of I am I do. am going to uh ignore uh any pretend battles between Nancy Pelosi and freshman congresswomen right. who can all too well take care of themselves. Right. They're grown ups. They're tough. They're grown ups They're and they have they have a supervisor. You know, Nancy Pelosi is sort of the supervisor of the Democratic Caucus. Right. And they can have as many tiffs and uh knock down drag outs with her to push her to the left, and she pushes back, and that's the way you get things done. That's how, you, how it works out. As, and as middle child says to me all the time, looking over her eyes, like I'm an idiot. <laughs> I am a strong, independent woman. I'm a strong, independent like, woman. Every one of these, every one of these freshman Congress yeah. persons is a yep. strong, independent woman who doesn't need my help. Who's right. Perfectly capable and, and absolutely. And uh, as long as, and there's a fight going on inside the Democratic Party among adults over what the party should do, what it should prioritize, right. and how it should go about it, which is completely normal. Right. The idea that the reason that it, it becomes abnormal and terrifying is because the consequences of even a small crack in the hull is that we lose democracy in America forever. And that's what's well, the shit also, also, once again, the mainstream media turns it into Democrats in disarray. Yeah. You know, and, the, and then that's the story instead of babies in cages. Right. And why does the so-called president need a handler mm-hmm. uh, with his daughter being the handler uh, at the G20? Right. Well, and I'm, I haven't forgotten that, folks. And, <laughs> I, and, and, and everyone else seems to have forgotten it. And speaking of the media, may I tell you my my fourth wall theory? Sure. OK. And I'd like to thank Fleabag, the TV series. Uh, oh, it's such a good show. Which we're watching and thoroughly enjoying uh, for inspiring me to think about what I've always thought about, but in a completely different way. And that was that Donald Trump's innovation, that the innovation he brought to the Republican Party, mm-hmm. not policy, it wasn't being a racist, all that was there. What he, His innovation was breaking the fourth wall of Republican politics. Hmm. And, oh, that's interesting. And, yeah. because, and, and in doing so, he broke the fourth estate, too, which is yeah. kind of, you know, yeah. rolling double fours. Um, because for decades, it's been established protocol in the media to let David Brooks, for example, go on and on about an entirely imaginary wish fulfillment Beltway Republican Party that, while conspicuously not noticing what actual Republicans were doing and saying in the real world, people that we know, people people who are Republicans in our lives, um, those people didn't exist as far as those uh, the Beltway was concerned. Mm-hmm. And these fourth wall breaks, which is when... Uh, Donald Trump directly addresses those people mm-hmm. in the in the mm-hmm. language that they speak among themselves. Freaked out the mainstream media but because, according to their mythology, no such Republican constituents of overt racist hypocrisy, conspiracy mongering, and pathological lying could possibly exist. That party couldn't exist. Therefore, why is Donald Trump looking at the camera addressing people in such a racist way? Mm-hmm. There's no that what, who's he looking at? <laughs> There's no one out there. And so every time Donald Trump did something monstrous, they pronounce his candidacy doomed. And yet every time he did something monstrous, he only got stronger. And that's what they couldn't bear, that he broke the fourth wall. The, the whole conceit of the media is that the real Republican Party didn't exist. That the imaginary Republican Party that we all had to pretend was really the Republican Party was the real party. The party of, of Burke debating, Bill yes. Buckley loving, Mona uh, Sharon, Mona right. Sharon, Paul Ryan, fiscal conservative, small government, love America, patriotic. That party hasn't existed for decades, if it if it ever existed at all. But the conceit, the Beltway media, because they have enormous media power, forced everyone to pretend that that was really true. 
and Donald Trump looked straight through the fourth wall at the bigots and imbeciles that he knew were out there and talked to them directly. And that freaked them the fuck out because he's not supposed to do that's supposed to be the death sentence. And and here's the thing. I think they're freaking out because some Democrats are breaking the fourth wall, too. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. Democrats like Elizabeth Warren and AOC speaking directly about the Republican Party as an existential threat to the country, which you're not right. supposed to do. Right. And that's that's where Democrats and disarray, disarray comes from, because mm-hmm. there are certain mm-hmm. norms, certain politenesses certain civilities you're not supposed to violate even though they've been even though they're dead even though the only people who who obey them obey them because they get paid to do so Mm -hmm. and so when elizabeth warren points at the gop and says they're the fucking problem you're not supposed to say that and that freaks out the same people who were freaked out when donald trump did it i think that's the real correspondence between the two the direct address to the invisible audience out there in the world that we all know exists, that we all know really runs the Republican Party, and which everyone in the media has paid themselves for decades to pretend was our imagination. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. I had not thought of it that way. I mean, that is populism, uh-huh. but it's populism with a television angle, which I really like. That you know, you are talking directly to. The, camera. the audience you're talking to the audience yeah. and you're yeah. not supposed to do that because the audience is not supposed to be there yeah and that explains twitter too it really does it that's really a, does. that's a direct that bypasses all of the filters except and, it doesn't because what no. happens is then his tweets get read out or printed out or whatever by politico yeah and still fed i mean there there's so much complicity in the mainstream media for for trump and that's something we also have to deal with uh, and and that, as I said, that's what I think Nancy Pelosi's doing. I think she really just feels like, fuck them all. We're not going to do this until it gives us the most bank. Yeah. And I don't agree with her. I wish, like I said, I wish I was in her confidence and that she could somehow slip us some hope because it's really frustrating at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is not an election year. And this is the summertime. And people aren't paying attention. Right. And people have the memories of fruit flies. And if you don't hammer it right up into their nose, right before they're going to vote, I mean, look at what happened with James Comey. Right. Hillary Clinton had, you know, Barack Obama hug her on stage at her convention. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump's convention was a shit show. It was a Nuremberg rally. Yeah, it was a Nuremberg rally. It was it was scary, crazy how bad it was. And everyone in the media assumed that Hillary would win. Yeah, right. So it's okay to dump on her all you want, James Comey. It's okay to fuck her campaign up all you want, James Comey, because of course she's going to win. So yeah, it doesn't really right. do any harm. Right. Uh, except that it, did a lot, it did radical harm. A lot of people know that uh, next Tuesday is my birthday. It's yes. also my mom's, my late mom's birthday. Yes. I was born on her birthday and I always have happy memories of her. I uh, Mother's Day is hard, but my, our shared birthday is, is for me. Uh, a calming day. I, I yeah. have happy memories of my mom on that day. Yeah. Um, but she died three days before Donald Trump was elected president. And I was mm-hmm. so glad that I was able to assure her that Hillary Clinton was going to win. You know, yeah. that yeah. There, we even had Republicans in our family who were going to vote for Hillary Clinton because Donald Trump is such a mess. Right. And uh, she was assured of that because mm-hmm. You know, she went, <laughs> I will tell you this now that she's gone, uh, she checked herself into the hospital when uh, Bill Clinton was impeached uh-huh. because it depressed her so much that uh, she was, I, I mean, I'm not saying she was massively suicidal, but she was depressed enough that the hospital wanted her to spend the night. And uh, it, she takes it, she takes these kind of things very personally. Mm-hmm. She did. And so, uh, you know, so I, do we. Mer- we do. But mercifully, uh, you know, she was dying of cancer and she was in hospice and so forth. And mercifully, she passed away before Donald Trump before that night, because that would have just devastated her. Uh, it devastated all of us. But uh, I'm I'm glad that if she was going to pass, that she passed away before that night happened. Because uh, it was a, it just would have caused her a lot of pain that she didn't need to have. So, yeah. What do you want to talk about now, Drew Class? Where are we on there? I don't know. The sound editor's wow. really got to. 52 minutes. We got to do a news roundup. 
Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Fortunately, really light news week. Not much happened this week. I love you, Drift Class. Thank you for the perspective. <laughs> I love you, darling. Yeah. Well, it, you know, same shit, different week. Uh, yeah. It, love, loving each other keeps us going too. <laughs> Hugs. Hugs in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Hugs. Well, stair hugs are the best. Stair hugs because he's so much taller than I am. Yeah. yeah I have to stand on the, a, the bottom stair and then I'm still shorter than you are. Mm -hmm. But we, but at least I can put my chin on your shoulder and not stretch too much. Yeah. Don't, don't overthink feeling good. Things that make you feel good. Find someone to hug. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. pet, pet your pet. Uh, go see a movie. Yeah, and thanks, thanks for all the kind words about our Zeppo who passed away. Yeah, yeah, you guys are the best. The number of nice tweets and kind words and and notes and so forth that I got, that we all got, both got, it mm -hmm. just means the world to us. You guys mean the world to us. Consider yourself hugged right now. Right now, consider yourself hugged if you're listening to this. Yeah. All right. Uh, we already covered Alexander Acosta. Yep. Uh, we already covered Bill Lee. Um, we should mention that Donald Trump's 4th of July debacle uh, and the protest bankrupted the uh, Washington, D.C. security fund. That's right. Uh, the mayor warned of D.C. warned that the fund has now been depleted. And you know, the fund was never reimbursed for the 7.3 million expenses from his 2017 inauguration. Nothing really says I love America like burning through the money spent to protect its capital to put on a shit show for a totalitarian asshole. The Trump administration mm -hmm. is quote unquote scheduled, and no one knows what to believe on this, uh, to begin coordinated raids no. to arrest at least 2,000 immigrants who have been ordered to be deported. And everyone knows the best way to do raids is to announce them months announce in advance. Announce them. Yes. Right. Make yes. sure you announce to everybody that you're going to do this and the cities you're going to be in. And goddamn Robert Mueller rescheduled his thing, so that fucks that all up, because the only reason these raids were scheduled was to distract from the Mueller hearing. Unbelievable. But it's true. They just, and mm -hmm. and uh, some of the freshman congresswomen gave uh, testimony today. Uh, regarding the administration's mm -hmm. child separation policy. And uh, they they were not uh, the questioners. They were the questionees uh, in front of the House Oversight Committee. It's a very passionate and emotional testimony that they gave. I highly recommend it. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you go, if you search YouTube for House Oversight Committee, you'll find uh, their testimony. You really need to go and check that out. Uh, Trump is expected to abandon his effort to issue an executive order to include a citizenship question on the 2020 census. Instead, Trump is taking executive action, instructing the Commerce Department to obtain citizenship data through other means. Previously, Bill Barr had said he believed there's a pathway to legally add a citizenship question to the 2020 census, and the Supreme Court's ruling against the administration was quote unquote wrong. Then they tried to switch the lawyers yeah. so that it would be different lawyers telling a different lie, and it wouldn't make the current lying yeah. lawyers look bad. But the judge, the judge yeah. caught them. Drift glass. He said, "Aha! Caught them. <laughs> You're trying to switch the lawyers. You can't do that. You're doing it in broad daylight in front of everyone. We noticed. Yeah, well, we're, we were, we're always allowed to do that before. Yeah. No, you're not. Not in my court. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the highlight of this week, in, in a lot of ways, was the social media summit at the White House, Lord. Uh, which is where nobody who represents the social media industry was was invited. But there were a lot of right wing shit posters there, Drift Glass. Yeah, there were. And and nothing <laughs> nothing says my First Amendment rights are being taken from me like Jim Hoff and a bunch of assholes from right wing uh, websites having a face to face conversation with the head of the government about how terribly they've been silenced and how they've been deplatformed and demonetized. And apparently they lost their spell checkers, too, because a lot of the signs for the thing was wrong. Yes. Just a whiniest bunch of children, the diaper babies I've ever seen. They're just, and they took away Twitter from me. I lost thousands. No, the bots were taken away from you. The Twitter bots. You know, the, the, the people yeah. that, the Russian critters that were invented to give you a false sense of uh, power and security. To right. give you 40,000 followers. And, and they took them yeah, all away. That's right. But yeah, th they were all bent out of shape about their First Amendment rights because- In the, in the Rose Garden. Yeah, in, the, in the Rose Garden, talking to the leader of the free world, yeah, quote about unquote. About how yeah. they have no rights. And, they're and really, not since Glenn Greenwald used to go from network to network to network, complaining that no one gave him a platform. Uh, <laughs> have I been sort of like amused and horrified by, the, by this sort of thing at the same time? This sense of absolutely limitless entitlement. 
that if anything bad happens to me for any reason, there must be a fucking conspiracy behind it. And all putting all these assholes in the same room and putting the, the number one troll in the universe at the head of the table because he's the president was, uh, j- first of all, straight out of idiocracy. And secondly, just I got to find something funny in there because the fact that this is really happening. And, and of course, the what if Obama had dot, dot, dot people were out in force today. And, yeah, and right. I said, but right. but remember, uh, 2016 never happened. So never, never happened. happened. Uh, Obama who? I don't know who that is. None of these people remember any of this shit. None of these people remember the beer summit. None of them remember how, how they flipped out over czars. Oh, my God. There's a czar. Oh, You're going to appoint someone to be a czar. Uh, Donald Trump has discovered Article 2. Apparently, somewhere in Article 2, it says the president gets to do whatever the fuck he wants and everybody shut up about it. He just discovered this. Never before has there been so much power concentrated in one president. Yeah. Me. Me. Yeah. I, I have powers and, I, and unlimited powers that no one's ever seen. So many powers no one's ever seen. And again, these are literally the same carbon based life forms who three years ago were shitting themselves because Barack Obama appointed czars and Barack Obama, oh, John Fugel saying said, because, because Barack Obama had common to the white house. Yep. <laughs> they invited yep. common, they the most harmless, the most genteel, the most kind rapper in the universe invited him to the white house. It. These people, <laughs> people lost their shit. And now they're putting QAnon lunatics in the Rose garden with the president of the United States. And well, that's okay. That's cool. And that's why you can't reason with them. That's why trying to explain to them anything outside of their universe is going to fail. And that's why trying to hold the people who built this monster factory, like the Never Trumpers, asking them to take some tiny fraction of a bit of responsibility for this will also fail. Because Republicans are, at some congenital level, incapable of admitting they're wrong and incapable of of admitting error. They can't do it. And so... Please uh, amuse yourself on social media trying all you want. I know I do, but it's a fool's errand. They never do it and they never will because that's what makes them Republicans. Um, we talked about the the subpoena cannon. That's great. Uh, well, it's great. And the fact that we know no one's going to show up, don't be frustrated by that. No. Realize that that, is, that leads to the clarion call of cover up, cover up, cover up. And that is something that breaks through to a lot of people's bubbles of i don't need, i don't think anything's happening yeah there is something happening it's called a cover-up mm-hmm. the white house is engaged in a cover-up and that is the meme that we need to be drilling into people's heads over this how is it possible that the house has has subpoenaed you and you're not responding at all to any subpoena uh this week a state department intelligence officer resigned in protest after the white house blocked portions of his written congressional testimony on wait for it climate change and its threat to national security. Rod Schoenover, I believe that's how you pronounce it, spoke before the House Intelligence Committee in June that climate change is a, quote, possibly catastrophic threat to national security. But the White House would not let him submit evidence and data supporting his assessment. Anti-science people, they're, they're, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know how you can vote for anyone that supports this kind of action. I, don't, I genuinely don't understand. I mean, I do understand because I'm a writer and I can sort of imagine the characteristics and I can go out and talk to people who are like this, but how fucking depraved do you have to be to be anti causality, anti science, anti enlightenment? How fucked up do you have to be that that's the hill you want to die on and you want the rest of us to die on the hill with you? Well, it's, it's, uh, you know, they should have their teeth drilled by not a dentist. That's yeah. how I feel about you it, go. you know, operated on by not a surgeon. All right. But, you know, he's not a politician. That's what I like about him. I bet he's saved. He, he, he has Article 2, though, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so he's not a whatever. All right. Trump said the U.S. will no longer deal with a British ambassador who called him inept and his, said his administration was dysfunctional yeah. in linked cables. That is such a terrible thing to say. Yeah. And Jimmy Kimmel said, you know, Donald, I wouldn't have known that he said any of those things except you tweeted about it. This is what they said about me. <laughs> yep. Yep. Britain has launched a criminal investigation into who leaked it. Yeah. And uh, also... Um, 
a lot of other countries off the record said, yeah, we would have said the same yeah. thing. I, I have a feeling that inept and dysfunctional are the nicest things. That's the that nicest said, words they came that, up with. That yes. everything else can't be repeated on a family broadcast, so they're, they're keeping it to themselves. <laughs> but yeah, what's the nicest possible thing you can say about this traitor and disaster area in the White House? This is my diplomatic uh, language. Yes. Uh, <laughs> let's just say inept and uh, dysfunctional. Okay, that's great. We'll just call it that. Uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York signed a bill allowing congressional committees to access Trump's New York state tax returns, which should drive him right up a wall. That's not going to help, though, because it really is the constitutional matter of the Ways and Means Committee is entitled to that law. So Yes, they are. And until they get their own police force with bayonets and and storm the commerce and storm the IRS and take them by force. Well, uh, there's going to be a court keep... order. I guarantee you there's going to be a court order, and, mm-hmm. and then we have a constitutional crisis. Yes, we do. A senior military officer accused t- Trump's nominee for the next vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of sexual misconduct because vetting is not a thing in the military either, no. apparently. No, we just, just throw people at the wall, whoever sticks, whoever looks good on TV. That's good. ICE officials used facial recognition software to analyze state driver's license photo database without motorists permission the white house correspondent for breitbart, <laughs> breitbart. has yeah. joined the trump administration michelle moons will work for the office of domestic policy council isn't that a name right out of kurt vonnegut it I is mean, really. michelle moons Mich- michelle moons who worked for breitbart and now she's going to be in charge of the domestic policy Cause, council because this is our pool our hiring pool is That's breitbart right. yeah okay and, and just after that in the vonnegut story the giant lampreys come out of the great lakes and kill everyone <laughs> um donald trump violated the first amendment you know that that amendment that we're all uh in favor of by blocking people on Twitter who criticize or mocked him, a federal court has ruled, and he can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. You literally are the government, and you can't block people who want to protest the silly shit you say on Twitter. You know, so, a sane president would have just kept the POTUS account and not tweeted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> not well. paid any attention to it. But, you know, we don't have that right now. No, no. Although I hope the next president of the United States, the Democratic woman who's elected to be president of the United States, retweets old donald trump tweets every goddamn day every well you know what i think i think the woman president who we will elect in 2020 will turn to her female vice president yeah, in 2020 right. good luck and say you know what i'd like you to do yeah. uh and you can flip a coin whichever one you want um here's what i want you to do i want you to spend an hour a day uh tweeting donald trump's old tweets every day every you know Just tweet every during day. fox and friends yeah every day <laughs> Every day, four hours with every Fox day. and friends, and then tweet, retweet Donald Trump's old tweets every day. You yeah. know those word a day calendars? I yeah. want a tweet a day every calendar. Day. I want every everything, day. everything every this asshole ever said repeated over and over never again. Never forget until the that end Donald of Trump was president, so called president of the United States. We're never going to let you forget that that was your party. And yet, no one voted for him, which is going to be gonna weird. It's going to be amazing to see. Oh mm-hmm. no, I'm an independent constitutional conservative. I never liked the tweeting. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You voted. Oh, speaking of which, I had somebody blocked me on Twitter today, Drift Glass. It wasn't. It wasn't Donald Trump. Oh, um, some <laughs> this this thing where Congress voted to rein in Donald Trump's war with Iran. Yeah. Say no, you right. can't do that. You need congressional approval to declare a war mm-hmm. on Iran. Someone tweeted, "Gosh, these these politicians do anything to keep their jobs." And I said, yeah, given that we haven't paid for the last time a Republican lied us into war, maybe voters have wised up to it a little bit. And she mm-hmm. blocked me. I, I think if I were uh, the Iranian foreign ministry, which I'm not, but if he, I were. He called Donald uh, Trump. He was not nice. He called Donald Trump mentally retarded. Uh, well, that, that isn't that nice. That isn't nice. It's, you know, no. It's it's politically incorrect. Yes, it's, it's not accurate, but it's politically incorrect. <laughs> uh, I would also include, I, I would just have a website up. Yeah. Uh, with a clip from Thunderdome <laughs> going, it says, break the deal, face the wheel. And that's all it says. <laughs> if you want any answers to why we're enriching uranium, why we're racing towards a nuclear warhead, why, talk to your fucking president. Yeah. What, break the deal, face the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump, here's the thing. Donald Trump doesn't understand how deals work. No. He really he doesn't. doesn't. He said, I reneged on a deal that was negotiated by the Kenyan usurper, Okay. That's what I did. 
And then they, they said they weren't going to go <laughs> with the deal I reneged on. Those sons of bitches. Yeah. That's exactly and, right. That's wow. exactly right. And there's no one around him to just just look at him like, Grampy, we got to take the car keys away from you now well, and, and walk whole, you down. The whole, whole House Republican caucus is now saying, we don't have oversight over the White House. What? what? <laughs> have you read Article 2? Have you even read Article 2? Yes, I've read Article 2. I've read have all the articles. part in it. <laughs> yeah. I've read the supplemental material. I've read a few of the Federalists even. And Benghazi, and yeah, Benghazi, Benghazi now has their panties in a twist over no, congressional no, oversight. No. Yes. Benghazi happened before 2016, yeah. Blue yeah. Gallery. Doesn't, doesn't count. count. Nothing counts yeah. before today. And that's the eternal now in which those people now live in. Um, I believe it's your turn. Yes, it is. Uh, immigration and Customs Enforcement started using three new for-profit immigration detention centers, investment uh, for Republicans, I'm sure, Despite mm-hmm. instructions from Congress to reduce the number of people in detention. And a federal appeals court dismissed an emoluments lawsuit against Trump. All three of the judges on the panel were appointed by Republican presidents. And it, there was apparently, a, I have heard on MSNBC, a collective groan when they figured out who the judges were going to be, that this was, this was going to go nowhere. Um, yeah. This is the job of Congress to impeach Donald Trump over emoluments and put him on trial mm-hmm. for it and... Yeah, it, that is that's, that's true. It. That is their job. Yeah. That is, and Congress, well, the Republicans have decided they don't want to do their jobs anymore, and their voters, their voters are perfectly okay with that. And that's that's where we're at. That's what happened this week. That is this week in history. Future generations, if you want to know what happened the week of July twelfth, this is it. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Sawyer. He is an orange kitty with beautiful eyes, and he loves freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Yes. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. Uh, we played this jingle last week. This is a jingle by Soprano Spinner on Twitter, who sent it to us, and we love her for it. Thank you. Freshly poured, freshly And you can visit Sawyer at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Drift Glass, we got a note this week from California, had a a contribution inside and a note that said, sorry, this is so late. (laughs) You're never too late. Uh, We appreciate your your contributions. It's my birthday next week. I love birthday cards. And uh, it's never too late to send a donation, but here's an opportunity for you to put off procrastination and uh, send me a birthday remembrance and send a donation to the podcast. And we so appreciate it. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. And isn't it a miracle Middle child sent thank you notes this week because her birthday was two weeks ago. Do I need more of a stamp if it goes to Colorado? No, you just need one stamp. What about Hawaii? You just need one stamp. And isn't that a miracle that for 44, 47, 50 cents, under 50 cents, you can send a first class letter anywhere in the 50 United States of America? It is a miracle. It is a miracle. It's one of the earliest inventions of our, uh, of our, of our government and one of the most enduring and the most adorable. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, an iced coffee when it's nice and hot in July, hey, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. I just got an email from Tammy, our angel nerd. She's heading to the detention facility to do the protests. So bless her heart. YouTube might be up a little late. She does the YouTube for us. So it might be up a little late tonight. She is. She is on the side of the angels. She is. And she's in Texas and she's going to a protest at a detention center and on her way. Mm -hmm. We bless her with all the good Mm -hmm. vibes we can send her way. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties break the fourth wall all day, every day. They sure do. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. 
Let's forget about the wine and the crime, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018.